Playback Pro Plus, all right, which is this icon right here. Mm -hmm. The difference between Playback Pro and Playback Pro Plus is not much other than some software, some coding on the back end, and a couple functionalities that I'll show you in the Plus side. One of the biggest things that we talked about, uh, and again, I, I'm going to touch on this, I'm not going to dive into it, is Stream Deck will not work with Playback Pro, but it will work with Playback Pro Plus, all right? So just keep that in mind if you're a Stream Deck user and you want to use it for playback, for playback reasoning, you need the plus, not the pro. It, they don't connect. Um, and that's, again, it's in the background. It's a software thing. So I'm going to go ahead and open this up. So right now, I have a second display monitor. I open this up without even fully opening the program. My second monitor to my right has now gone blank, and there's no signal going to that monitor anymore. So another player pro is now taken over and it is in charge of my system. So I'm gonna to go to a new show and it opened the program. And you're gonna notice that the, right at the beginning, I'm gonna show you that this show is untitled. The reason I tell you that is because anything you do to, these, to, this, to, this, um, to this program from here forward, if you do not save it, you have lost all, all the edits you have done, all right? And it will not save it until you tell it you're gonna save it. So it doesn't auto save for you. It doesn't do any of that stuff. You have to tell, you have to do it all manually. So if you're used to play games back in the day and you had to go to a save point or whatever it was, and you had to save stuff, this works the same way. There's no auto saving like in MIDI or Resident where it auto saves all, all that for you. All right. So here's the, here's what's going to happen. We're going to talk about this first section here called the playlist, which is this white section here. This is called the playlist. This whole section is called the playlist. This is section one. We'll review this. We'll talk about it. I'll pause. I'll let you guys that, uh, have any questions. You ha if you have any questions, you can ask me. Um, there are some advanced functions I'll touch on, but I won't dive deep into. Again, just because of time. It takes us about 45 to 50 minutes to get through this. Um, questions are allowed. There is no time limit, but there is an hour long uh, period that I try to do this in, all right? Then we'll come to this side over here. This side is called your clip settings, all right? And this is adjusting clips for the preview side. You have the same thing on the other side. Your clip settings over here for the program side. Now these work in tandem of each other and I'll show you, we'll do a walkthrough of how that works out and how they work together. Now down here you have your, your clips, uh, I'm sorry, not clip settings. You have your preview side here. So think about this, think about this whole, this whole window here is a preview side and your program side. Anybody who's a video engineer uh, or who's a worker switcher you also notice that immediately you have your take that's in green and your, your, um, your kill that's in red. So green is your preview. Red is your program, just like in broadcast. You know, green means you're in your preview window, red means you're on your program side, or you're, that you're live. And just a quick little synopsis on that. Uh, back in the old days when, when broadcast was, the, was, when radio broadcast was a thing, um, you used to have to switch a light and the light was red. And that's where you get that on air or your live um, color from, that scheme color from is where it comes from. Uh, so red means you're live, uh, green means you're on the preview side, and we'll kind of go over that in a second as well. Um, this whole section here, this is called your, Oh, man, I'm sorry, I'm losing my voice. Just give me a second here. This whole section here is it's called your show controllers. I'm sorry. <clears throat> it's called your show controllers. And this will control a lot of things. We're going to dive in a little bit into the more advanced stuff here. But again, I'm going to touch on it. I'm not going to dive deep into it. Uh, if we have time at the end, we can talk about it more. I will include a, a couple uh, one-pagers to kind of dive into that on your own a little bit more. So if you download it like Kathy and you have it on your own, you can play with it more on your own uh, you know, at home and kind of dive into it through that one pager. Um, so then this side is your program side, which again is very similar to the preview side, is the program side. We're gonna talk about the setup portion here to do an example, um, but we're gonna go in an order. So when we get to that order, we'll dive into this a little bit and how this affects your system. All right, and this again is your clip settings on this side. Same thing as your preview side, but on the program side, and we'll, we'll, again, we'll talk into how, how, the, how they play together, how they work together, and how you can utilize those, those different features. Um, and then down here, we have your na navigational controls, which is the same for both your program and your preview side. And again, we're going to do step-by-step, -step, talk about every single button, every single tab, every single thing, and what it does, how I've used it, how I utilize it, and things like that. So again, before I dive into the next step, which will be the playlist, do you guys have any questions for me as of right now? Okay, so moving on. So this is the playlist here. And again, I will talk through... The keyboard side of this, I will include today after this last session, uh, one pagers in the event page, and I will include the, the full PDFs 
for you guys to get to download on the files tab of AV Educate um, with a little note so you guys can come back and get that stuff if you want to. So on the playlist side, if you want to import a clip, you can go to File, New Clip. On the keyboard, it's Command N or Command New. All right. Then a window pops up. This window pops up. We're going to go to the GoPro and hit Add. All right, now I've imported my, for, my first clip. Now for me, you guys know how to do it. So file, new clip. All right, I'm gonna do it on the keyboard, command, new, same process. I'm gonna upload the BBC and add that. Now I've added a little bit two, all right? So I'm gonna touch on it real quick. You can remove clip, all right? So we'll go here, we'll go command, new again. I'm gonna add the JPEG. Import it. So now I've imported a JPEG. You'll notice it's on freeze already because it's an image. So there's no looping of it. There's no play of it. It's just an image. I'm going to highlight that image. We can command delete. And now I'm going to delete this image. Okay. So that's real quick how to add and take out something on the, on the fly. I use the keyboards a lot because we're showing it through the, through the computer. I'm showing you how to use this portion here. All right. So we're going to talk about this real quick. You can take from here, take your video. Don't recommend doing it that way. If you're using a stream deck, you can put in your numbers here. So one, two, or you can do it for yourself. It's keep an order. If you have a shot list from a client, let's say, and they're, they're calling it, you know, video one or video roll two, you can kind of do it that way. You have the title, which is automatically imported from what the title of the, of the clip was that you got, right, or the video you have. So here says GoPro 3. My main down here says GoPro 3 Hero 3. That's what my file's called, okay? On the comments section, for me personally, if the client is calling something different, let's say they're just calling it the Go video. So my client's calling it the Go video, all right? So instead of me having to change this, which I can, all right, I just have to highlight and change it. But now this won't match my original file video, which is why I don't change that. So now it's called the Go video. That's where my client now can, can see or I'm sorry, that I can see, I can have a quick reference to it. In the sections, let's say I'm doing a multi-day setup and I want to use, I want to use uh, Playback Pro just to have it all organized into one bit file. I don't do it this way, but I, I know people that do. I can do, hey, these two videos are day one, and then these two videos are going to be day two. Uh, so, I'm sorry, was somebody asking a question? Did I cut somebody off? No, but there's uh, another part of this that I just learned is you can actually add audio clips in there as well. Yes, you can add MP4 uh, files in here as well, yes. Okay, so <clears throat> I just added two people. All right, so we've gone over this. So TRT, right? So I can see that the GoPro video, the TRT means total run time. That is five minutes and seven seconds. I can loop that, which is just like audio. I'm going to lower this real quick so it doesn't blast you guys. So if I loop it, and all I did was I press play, I went to go to 10. I fast forward to 10. Down here's my countdown timer. And now it started right back from the beginning. And I can see on my scrub wheel down here that it started all over again. All right, so that's a loop, that's a loop functionality. Loop duration. Now this goes up between five and negative five. Loop duration is the amount of time that loop has to come back to the beginning again. So instead, if it's like this video, for example, where it just, it ends abruptly and starts abruptly, you can change that so that now there's a, there's a little bit of a gap between it. I will also mention that uh, Playback Pro, if you do these functions, works as an A to B switcher. So it's gonna go to black and come out of black. Uh, there's a, there is a way, which is more on the advanced side, which I will, I will show you where that's at, but I won't dive into it because it takes time. I will provide a one sheet paper for that you can transition between videos so that you get an actual transition so that the content looks like it's a switcher and then an A to B switcher. All right, so then we're gonna go show, we're talking about freeze, I'm hit freeze here. I'm gonna take again, go to 10. So I've got the last 10, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one, zero, go. Now, now you see that it froze at the end. If your client provided a video, that has a logo on it, this functionality is very good to keep on for your switcher guy 
to have that extra second to switch between your video feed and his next thing, whether it's iMac or PowerPoint. And what, what all you do is you're allowing him to have that, that little extra second to, to hit a button, all right? If you don't have that, have that function, he's gonna go to black and then fade out and then transition. He's probably most likely hotkeying it, so he's gonna go from one to the next, and they may call it ahead of time. I personally would still freeze it if I, if I have the logo option, just in case someone's, you know, for whatever reason, like the video's been 15 minutes and they got distracted or someone was talking to them and they need that split second to get on board. Now, instead of going to a blank screen, they just saw a logo and then they just saw something else popped up, all right? So I'm gonna unclick that. I'm gonna hit link. So the best way I can describe link for you is think of link as the play, as a um, giving a command to the next video it is linked to. So right now, this is a very simple one. We have two, right? And you're gonna have multiple videos. You're gonna have five videos, 10 videos. Whatever you do linked in that order is what it'll play in. It'll keep playing the next link, the next link, the next, the next link, in whatever order you do it in. Uh, and it'll start back to the top and keep going down until you stop it. So I'll show you real quick. So right now, I've linked my first video and my second video. I'm gonna hit take, I'm gonna jump to 10, and you can see my first video is red right now, which means it's playing. My second one is blue, which means it's been queued up in the preview side. And now it's gonna take, so one, zero, go. Boom, my next video just played. So now, again, I still have everything linked, right? This is what I'm talking about. Because I haven't stopped the feed yet, I'm gonna hit go to 10, I'm gonna let it count down, and now you can see that on the pro preview side, my next video's already been queued up. Because I only have two and they're linked, they're both linked, it's gonna keep going in this circle over and over and over again until I stop it, all right? So now, I don't need to do it anymore, I'm gonna kill that feed, and now it stops. And I'm gonna unlink these two so we don't do that again. And the same thing with this functionality here. If I want that link duration to be a little bit longer in between the, the clips, I can add five seconds or take away five seconds. And it'll do that. if you take away five seconds, if you add five seconds, you're just changing uh, uh, literally five seconds of what it is between that next jump. So if you have videos that they come in really hot with music or they, or they just pop up real fast, you can kind of uh, adjust that a little bit so it's not such a quick transition between, between these uh, audio cues. It's more of a subtle transition. Um, so that's pretty much the basics of the, the playlist. And that's our first section right there. You can add JPEGs, you can add audios, you can add videos. Um, you can reconfigure this if you want to. And I just, I'll just show you real quick. I'll add an uh, image here. Let's say, I could, this is, let's say this is my logo, right? Instead of me having to go, I could just grab that and move it up to the top. You can do it with any file you want. You can change whatever you want. It does not affect anything within playback. All right, so again, I'll stop. Anybody have any questions for me? Uh, now's the time to ask it about, about the playlist. And then next, we'll dive into the clip settings on this side. One thing I learned uh, between the last class is when you go up to the loop duration and the link duration, that if you take the slider from its current position, move it to the left, you are actually creating a mix between the two scenes. Where it sits, where he has his arrow right now, that's a hard cut. So, and if you move it to the right, that is, that's more of a delay. So that's another way to look at it. Yeah, and then, uh, so this functionality that Scott's talking about is also what's down here. And this is, this is what allow you to do that transition, which is a little bit more clear. Um, when it comes to switching it versus just a cut. And again, that's more of an advanced thing. Nine times out of 10, you'll never use that function. To know it's there is great. We'll provide you with that content so you can kind of dig it into on your own. Uh, we just don't have the time to go through that on this, on this session. So anybody, anybody else have any, any other questions or, or, or feedback they want to provide? All right, so we'll move on then. So we're gonna come into this part down here and I'm gonna go to the GoPro real quick. And I'm just going to talk about this section here. So you can see from right here, I have main, geometry, and levels. All right, we're going to start from the main one. So when you click on a video from, from your playlist, you can see that my main shows me a thumbnail. All right. If that thumbnail doesn't work, that's okay. Don't worry about it. Play it through, let it run. That's a, that's a corruption in the file. Uh, and it could be because it was transferred 100 different ways. It could be the, the way you, you transfer the last minute to yourself. 
Sometimes it still will play through fine. Other times it won't. If you, if you have the clients and the time, go back and say, hey, something wrong with this file. I need a new file. All right? Um, if you don't, try to watch it through real quick. You may still be okay. It's not anything to panic about. If, you, if you're new to this, it's not common to happen, but it does happen. It does still play a lot of the times. It's a root file difference between a PC and a Mac that happens a lot of those times. Or someone downloads a file from the cloud onto a thumb drive and it transfers to you. Something in the metadata has been corrupted and it doesn't show that thumbnail. It's literally just a root programming in the background. Now what you can do about it, it doesn't always mean that the file is corrupted or bad. Um, it's a 50-50 chance. Most times if you see it though, I would real quick ask for a different file or a different upload. Um, but again, it's not dire, it's not dire that if, it's, if it's not there, but it is a good reference for you real quick to know which video you're, you're, you're clicking on. Uh, another thing I would mention it, if you have the time, again, go through these with your, with, your, with your team, right? Watch them all the way through from start to finish so that you make sure there's no glitches and no errors. And we'll talk about what I'm, what I'm looking at personally when I'm doing these uh, reviews a little bit down the road so you guys, you guys get an idea of it. All right, so now we're gonna go into the geometry. And I'm gonna, talk, I'm gonna bring up your image, and I'm gonna tell you some of the things that I do and the workflows that I have. And if you guys have anything different from that, they've used it, let me know your processes and your explanations. And uh, you know, just to give, give feedback to myself and to everybody else in the group. So if you look at the size, it's this top one, okay? If you think about this black area as, your, as your, your canvas or your raster area, this is 1920 by 1080 because that's what we're sending out, or we're supposed to be sending out at least, but the video is 1920 by 1080. That is the aspect ratio. So you're 1920 divided by 1080, you get 69, you divide that, you get 1.78. So that's where that math kind of comes in for that stuff. But I know this is 1920 by 1080, 1.7799. Um, and I know that this is a, a HD quality image, um, but everything to me looks good. It looks, it looks widescreen, it looks 69 to me. But let's say for whatever reason, uh, my content doesn't feel correct. I got a 720 image and it's not big enough to fill my, my 1080 image. If you go to size, this restrains your horizontal and vertical to be the same as you adjust that. So you don't get any skewing or any warping. The image may not fit, like if I go bigger, it doesn't fit, but I'm not skewing the image. I'm not warping anything out. I'm not doing anything else to it. I'm, I'm physically making those pixels bigger. I will get some kind of distortion. Um, you know, I'm blowing up my pixels to be bigger on, the, on a bigger screen, so there will be some of that. But if it, is a, if it is a smaller image, and I need to make it fit my screens, this is the way to do it without, without warping anything out or without causing any kind of stretching or, or changes. Um, so this is one way to do it. If let's say I'm doing a four by three uh, image, or it'd be reverse nowadays, but let's say I had a creative client that gave me four, four by three screens and I need to change some things around. I can go to asset ratio and change this out, right? Okay, well now it fits this way. So let me go over here and make it fit this way. Now you saw me do this. So you can see that it's been stressed out and skewed because you saw me do it. If you have to do this scenario, which is, I hope you don't ever have to do it. And, I, and we'll, we'll go through this uh, in the next part where I'll show you um, the scenarios that you might be running into that you can avoid doing this. But if you had to, do not let the client see you doing this. Because in my experience, if a client sees you doing this, they now see that distortion and it is now permanently in their brains and it's not acceptable. Which might be your, your, your trick, because I've done that before too. In order to get a new, a new one, I'd be like, hey, this is what it looks like. I can do this. And I go, oh, no, no, we can't do that. We, you got to have the right sizing. Okay, well, I need a new file at this resolution. Oh, but then you might get that. Oh, we don't have the content guy here. He, uh, they sent us weeks ago. We, we can't just recreate it. Okay, well, then this is your solution on the back end. Or you play it small like, like it was. All right? You have crop functionalities in the Player Pro Plus. So if you do a bottom crop, if you do a bottom crop, let's say you have any kind of a ticker from the news or you have a captioner and for whatever reason the switcher doesn't have a, um, for the videos doesn't have the ability to, to give you that uh, black border for the captioning. You can go into here and add a black border at the bottom. And again, you're not manipulating your, your pixels. You're not changing anything out. You're literally adding black pixels to come up and cover your image. So you're not skewing anything out by doing that. And then you have top, and you have left, and you have right. And again, if you, have a, if you, have any, if you use any of these and you, you still want it to show clearly in your, in your outsource, right? I've used this a couple of times for um, video loops inside of a set piece. 
right? We've had a set piece that's a certain kind of uh, shape on it. I've had to use some of the masking to, to, to mask out some of the other parts we don't need out of that video. If the content is, is produced professionally, they'll, they'll, they will have specified all the content, so it's okay to use. Um, one thing I will show you though, this is a, 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 a trick that works pretty well if the content is just you know abstract stuff like, like this. Um, but for example, let's say I stretch this out, and let's say GoPro was my client, right? My client's gonna really notice that that GoPro does not look right. So if you have a logo that is client specific or that is a brand that's well known, like if the face of Jesus is on this, everybody knows what Jesus looks like, and you skew him out, they're gonna know something's wrong. So that's something to be cautious of when you're using this little trick uh, to kind of make it fit what you have going on. Go back to geometry. I'm gonna reset this. So again, this is kind of how geometry works. Uh, let me go to a different image real quick. Uh, back in the day, when you had Screen Pros, uh, Screen Pro Twos, and Image Pros, and things like that, when they were more popular, they're the more they're the bread and butter of the industry. There used to be an issue between the horizontal and vertical shifts between Macs and PCs. So what Playback Pro did is they created this little function. All right, I'm gonna show this just to show you to do a horizontal position. So again, I'm maintaining my aspect ratio. I'm physically moving that image within that raster box or within that canvas. And it allows me to move it one or two pixels over. Now, when you guys get that sheet for me for the keyboard commands, command arrow keys can, can do fine tuned shifting as well as on a timeline and through the, through, the, um, through the scrubber. However, because I'm showing you on the screen, I wanna show you how to do everything with the mouse. Again, I'm gonna, I'm gonna hit to reset it. You also can see you have a, so you can see down here, I have a reset, a copy, and a paste. If I wanna do multiple clips, so let's say I wanna do small here, I'm gonna copy that settings, go to here, I'm on geometry, paste geometry, and now you can see that this just changed. And now my videos have changed. So if you have multiple clips that are need to be resized to fit, that's one way to do it. Now the advanced way to do it that we won't jump into is to click on action, edit multiples, and use this program here to, to select and change all your settings. Now, you see this warning up here? This warning is, is for a reason. This is very powerful and this manipulates all of your video content, not individually, okay? So if you do this functionality here, you're manipulating everything. Every single video clip will be changed. So if you have a logo and the logo doesn't need to be changed, you in essence are changing all of it. All right, so the reason I say that is because if you do this the way I'm showing you, where you just copy and paste, you can, you can do individually what you want and not have to change all the other ones you have. So if you only need to do five, but you have 10, you can do those individually. You can do it from the edit one as well, the master one and do them all at once, but just remember that's a powerful tool and you could mess other things up. Again, I'm gonna reset the geometry on both of these. And now I'm back to the default settings for Playback Pro. The last thing we're gonna to touch on over is on the level side. So you can see that I lowered this. And you can see under here, this is a VU meter. So I'm gonna play GoPro because it's five minutes and I'll leave it low. I'm gonna raise the volume. And I'm gonna show you this for a reason. This is why we do it this way. The reason the clip ends are the same, okay? If I go to the levels on the program side, and now on the program side, this means that the, the screens are seeing it on the live side, my TD is seeing it on their monitors, everybody's aware of what's going on. I'm gonna show you the VU meter in real time as it works, and I'm gonna raise the volume here. So it's at green. And now you're at the red side. So if you have a video that's coming in and it's clipping like that, you should know on your own, I, I need to lower this volume, it's not good. If you're seeing that and you can't hear the audio yet, you might want to tune into the audio and say, hey, is that, is that clipping the whole time? Is that sound bad? Because the audio, it might just be something in the background that's playing that music. This is the way to do it. So here's what I'm gonna show as well. I'm gonna leave this, let's kill this real quick. And I'm gonna show you what I'm talking about when I say these two, these two sides work together, all right? And there's a little bit of a difference on my program for some reason uh, between the numbers, but they're, they're, they're very, very close. So this is that six right now over here. I go to take, it is at 6.29. Now I'm gonna change this to 50%. Now 
I'm going to kill it. Now, mind you, I didn't do anything on the preview side, but my levels are now changed to 50% because this, this uh, menu is are tied together. So whatever you do to one, you do to the other. It's, it's uniformly. What I will add to this, though, is that if you do all these changes and you do not save anything, when this program closes out, whether it crashes on its own or you close it out by yourself, you have lost all those changes you did. So I can do this all day long to all my clips and on the program itself, it'll save my settings. But if you close out this program, the computer goes to sleep, it crashes and you didn't save that, that changes, they are gone. You have to go in there and do it all over again. All right? What do you need then? So I'm gonna show you the right here and I'm gonna show you the gammas. So these say that I never used it, but it's one time I've ever used it in my entire career. Um, the particular scenario I'll go into when I get there, but so gamma changes your black levels, right? Gamma, black changes your white levels. Gain changes your your your, uh, your white levels or, or the the lumen the lux of a, of an image. I've used this as a cheat trick. Um, the way I've used this is if you gain up like a couple, you know, 10, 11, uh, not too much. You got, a, you got a, a dim projector, it's not showing like, a, like an image. This will make some of the colors pop a little bit and get you a brighter image. Yes, it'll wash it out a little bit. Most clients that I do this with don't notice that. They just say, oh, the, 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 the video looks better now or whatever the case is, looks a little bit better. Um, they're not noticing the wash out as much as you, you would think. All they're seeing is that, that that image is dim and now, now it looks a little bit more, 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 uh, more poppy than it was before. And all you've done is, is added a little bit of gain to that image. Um, this is not the correct way to do things. Uh, obviously, the projector should be better, um, but this is a little cheat code if you're if you're in a bind and you're you're managing multiple rooms and you got to just kind of you know go with the flow. This is a quick little workaround for you on that. Saturations with your colors, your primary colors. So I can add a bunch of colors, take away all the colors, and then uses all your RGB white color, everything in between, and change all those colors. And again, you can reset. I can copy that and change it to another file, uh, and then paste it into that new file. And that's pretty much everything you need to know for the, um, the clip settings right here. And we're gonna touch about the fade in and fade out at the end for the program side, just to see how that works in real time. So before I move on again, does anybody have any questions about this that I haven't gone over or that they want me to go over again or that I didn't explain it well enough? I'm just gonna check the chat real quick, make sure I'm not missing anybody. All right, so moving on. Now we're gonna go into the, the, uh, the I'm sorry. Now we're gonna go into the navigational controls. And what I'm talking about is this, this section right down here. All right, so this is your navigational controls. So if I'm on the preview side here, and I just wanna, I just wanna preview this clip before I send it out, make sure it's okay, because I got a last minute, but I still got a few seconds to, to, to see it. I do, as of right now, my GoPro files here, Everything's worded out well. I see my thumbnail, but I just want to preview it. So I have just previewed it on this side. I will, I will make a note. If you haven't talked to the audio guy, and audio guys do this two different ways. One, they leave you open and at you know zero or negative five dB, whatever the preference is, or they want full control and they mute you. If you have an audio guy that leaves you open the entire time, then you might want to call out to him ahead of and say, hey, I need to check this video out because you can't real fast. And he'll, he'll mute you. Um, where I'm at, Zach Larson's my audio guy. He likes to leave it open, so I have control of it. You trust me in that aspect. I trust his abilities. We communicate very well in headsets. Um, never had a problem. If you do this trick, though, yeah, no one's going to see the video but you, but the audio will be going out. Uh, so make sure with your audio guy you can get that out there um, this way. Stop that. So here's a pause button, right? So I pause it, continue it, and I'm going 1x, which is normal speed. I go 2x, which is two times faster. I never needed to use it, but the, the option's there. You need to, I guess. I go eight times faster. Again, I never use it, but it's there. I can also go in reverse, one times faster, which I have used before in an Alice in Wonderland themed event to give a, a Mad Hatter kind of uh, thing to the video. All right, and you can see 
all these three right here work out really well. Now, the next part I'll show you is if you see here, this is my this is my this is part of your your timing, right? So this is how much time is it, it is ran or run. My videos are ran for one minute and fifty seven seconds. I still have on the red side three minutes and ten seconds left of this video. This is the side that they're going to call for on headset if these are long videos. How much time do I have left? It's the red one. Three minutes and ten seconds. How much time do you have left? All right. We're going to go over comms and you're going to. I'm going to explain to you the TRT portion here and how when you play a video. You need to say, hey, video's rolling, five minutes and seven seconds. This allows the whole team to know how much time they have. It allows the team to know that you've acknowledged her and you've, you've played the video and this is how much time is on that video. Even though they probably already know this and you've talked about it and you did it in rehearsals, do it again because at this moment, at that time that video's playing, you are now in charge of almost the entire show. All right, and we'll, we'll dive into that a little bit in a second. So if I need to edit this video, let's say my client brought me this video, and like, hey, I really like this content. I want to play in the background. I have some other audio stuff that I'm gonna play so that I don't need the audio for this. Okay, but I don't own, I'm not, I'm not with GoPro, I'm not an affiliate. We can't show GoPro, right? Again, this is wrong, but you get put in these scenarios. Here's a way to work with it. If you see my arrow right over here, all right, and there's a way to do this with the keyboard, with the keyboard which I'll send to you. I'm just gonna hit this button a couple of times and you're gonna see my runtime is, is jumping frames. All right, and I'm just fine tuning that to see when I get to that first frame, boom, there it is. I'm gonna go back and I'm gonna go to set in. And now you're gonna see my green arrow, my new start point is here. Then my video will start from here instead of from the black. On the other side to this, if you look at my arrow, there's a, there's a little red one for my end, right? I'm gonna go over here and again, I don't wanna show the GoPro at the end of this. So I'm gonna scrub to when I'm close. I'm using my mouse to scrub this right now. Oh, there we go. So now I want to fine tune it. Now I'm clicking on my mouse on, on down over here. I'm clicking over here on this button. Okay, too much. There we go. So now I'm going to go set out. And now my endpoint has changed. All right. So now let's say I did that. I moved to the clip and now, oh shit, I, I got to go back. All that has been saved. And when you take it, It'll pop right in there. So no, so no, uh, no GoPro. I'm gonna go to 10. We'll jump to the end so you see the last 10 seconds. And now it's gonna play out to the end and go to black. Boom, went to black, all right? So if you do a freeze at this point, my last clip will stay on the screen. I'm not using a logo anymore. So maybe for whatever reason, they just hate to squeeze that last frame for me. Because I gotta do, I'm running a spider. I got two switches I gotta do. I need an extra second. Okay, so then I got an extra second. So now the video stops. The audio stops. But now that the the switching, the video switcher has an extra second to to go to the next scene. Okay. So now, I'm gonna unfreeze. I'm killing this. I'm gonna link this to the next one. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm gonna loop this. And we'll go, we're gonna go over the fade in and fade out portion of this, which is which is the last key for this section here. So if I loop this. And for whatever reason, this, this to me just pops in too quickly. And then when it ends, it's, it's really like, it's, it's at the climax of that, of that music. And I don't like, I don't want it to be so climactic. I kind of want it to like fade, right? So I'm gonna do a fade at the beginning. And it's gonna come in from, it's gonna come in from black to a clip. All right, so, the, so now the videos kind of came in smooth. The audio came in smooth. And I kind of like that, right? So I, I have it on loop, I'm gonna go to go to. Now like the videos are the climax, it sounds really good, it's high, it's, it's high, it's got a lot of noise, it's about to end, it's gonna start over from the beginning, right? I did that fade, so came back in, right? But, but now it's it's not right. Now we went from super, super high to super, super high. Okay, now it's a much smoother transition, right? So now if I was linking this between clips, my, my fade to the next one will be smoother. It won't be so, so quick and so abrupt. It won't be this hard cut. It'll be a nice, smooth audio and video smooth out, and then next smooth in. Obviously, I'm looping this one, so we're doing it for this one. But if you have multiple videos and they're linked together, that's a nice way to kind of get them to come in together, all right? I'm just going to kill that right there. And again, I'm going to take my clip now. I'm going to go to the beginning. 
set to end, and now I'm back at the start. Go to my out point, right? I'm gonna go back to the original out point, set out, and now I'm on my out point. And now when I play my video, my start's the same as it was, and my end's the same as it was. And now I'm back to normal. Now you can, right, if I wanted to, file, duplicate clip. I have the original file, I have the duplicated file. I can modify this however I want to. And leave this one the way it is. There is a technique that's not talked about, but it's used. If you gotta splice two videos together, right, one after another, you link the videos together, you do your in and your out points, and you match those up so that you go from one to the other. Again, I won't dive deep into that, but that's the gist of it. Um, that's how that works. So we've manipulated, this one's the same, as, so I'm gonna delete this. So I'm gonna delete this, all right, so command, delete, and I'm gonna get rid of it. All right, so that's pretty much the gist down here for the uh, navigational controls. Does anybody have any questions about that? Okay, so now we're gonna go into the preview side real quick. Um, if you wanna do a transition that is a little more smooth, that, that goes from, from video to video instead of from video black to, to black video, you would use this section here. All right, and again, we won't dive into that, but that's what this section's for. This is a transition between clips. All right, I already went over this. This is your total run time. This is the time going up, so how much time the video has run. This is your total, uh, how much time is left. So how much time your video has played already. So you see the total number here, starts at zero, ends at 133. As I play this, now I've run it for one second and I've run it for, um, I have a minute 30 left of my video. All right, now I'm gonna kill that real quick. <clears throat> this whole section is part of your soul controller section, which again, we'll dive into a little bit of this, but we won't dive into deeply. Um, I will provide you the PDFs and everything you need for that on the back side of this. Uh, that's a more advanced side, in my opinion. Uh, this is meant just to be a basic overview of how the system runs. And uh, nine times out of 10, you probably won't use any of these functions, but I want you to know that they exist. So again, so that's the preview side. This is your preview window. This is how you, this is how you play it down here on the preview side. All right, if you hit, if you hit take, you go live. You hit take over here, you go live. Sorry, if you hit take from over here, from the play window side, you go live. You hit take from over here from the preview side, you go live. You only wanna play it on the preview side, just come down here and hit this little arrow down here. All right? And again, I'm showing you all these, all these functions using a mouse, uh, not through the keyboard. You can do all these things through the keyboard. Um, it's very intuitive and there's a lot of commands you can use. So now on the program side, we're gonna jump into this for a little, a little, a little quick second here. Um, primarily, everything is the same between preview and program minus that take functionality. So you got go to 30, go to 20, and go to 10. And you can see here my transition, right? my, my fade or my ramp. And that's for the start side of this. So if I do zero, we go to BBC. It's just a straight cut. Comes right in super hard. If I do one, it gradually comes in a little bit. All right. So that's real quick with that. Now you have go to thirty, go to twenty, and go to ten. If you've been in rehearsals all day and you've done this multiple times, you've sussed out all the problems. Your videos are good to go. And you have everything ready. They might just say, hey, let's do another rehearsal. Let's do a run through, a, a run of show. You're going to go through everything. They're going to say, okay, roll video one, go to 30, go to 30. You let it roll out. You do your thing, 30, and then you count down. You say 20, and then you say 15. And then I, for me personally, I count down to 10. 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1, 0, and go. There's three extra numbers there that you want to use. Don't just say 0, and then everybody goes. Everybody's, everybody's TDs are different. They're different. Um, you need to figure it out, but if you have your own process of how you do it, they will conform to you after the first or second time, and they will understand, okay, he says this at the end. Um, I say go, or I say done, um, or I say, I, I don't know if it's just say, I say zero, done, or zero, go. It depends on my role for the position I'm in and the people I'm working with, um, but I don't end at zero. There's always another verbiage for me right after zero. I know it sounds weird, 
but the the timer here is going to run to milliseconds. So you have your seconds, you have your your minutes, your seconds, and your milliseconds. So that extra that extra one is what you need to say. You need to call out, or or someone's going to miss their cue because you you just said zero, and they're like, yeah, but isn't there another another step? Or they may go too early because you went too early. Um, and then the last part here, which is the most important part, is setup, which is a, a thing on Playback Pro Plus. So I know because I told you, or you know because I told you, that my videos are 1920 by 1080, my output is 1920 by 1080, um, and I can double check that by going to my system preference. You guys saw when I plugged it in, everything came up. For me, I saw it come up, so I didn't check anything. If it didn't come up, right, you need to go to your system preferences. Um, let me pull this out real fast because it's taking over. All right, so up here, change now to Playback Pro 2. I'm going to go ahead and close this out for a second. Displays, arrangement, and now I see this is my desktop, right, because it's got the bar. This is my extended display. I'm going to go to gather windows. My extended display is a TV, on on TV. I'm sending out 1080p at 60 hertz, which is what I want to do. So I know that my, I know that the system itself is seeing a 1920 by 1080 image, and it is sending that out, because it's telling me to see that. If for whatever reason you're not seeing that option, you can hit Option or Alt. If you look down here, this is changing. Detect displays. Gather windows. Detect displays. That's like a force acquire, and it'll let you. Uh, it'll let you. It'll give you more resolutions, and it'll force something down that line that you that it can send, but it's saying the other end is saying that it can't see it. So if you get that problem, you can go here and hit Detect displays. All right. So now we're going to go back and open Playback Pro. So you can open last show file, which is going to show me right down here, AFPC test clips, Playback Pro 2, right? Playback Pro, Playback Pro 2. So I, I, I know that's the right one, or I can go to open show. So I'll go to open show just to show you the long way. Playback Pro 2 and open. All right, so this is the part that, that most people, when they have problems with sizing, it's sometimes due to this. So if I click on setup. I'm sending 720 by 576 to that monitor that I'm looking at, which is why my content looks a little bit wrong. Even though I, even though I know that the content is correct that they gave me, I know that the that the video I have is correct that they gave me. I know that what I'm, what I'm sending out from the Mac side is correct, but Playback Pro is sending out something else. So I'm gonna change my resolutions to 768, four by three. And now you'll see my screen has flickered through. Geometry settings have changed, right? So if your meters are up and you are connected and you're, you're with, through, a, through EDI did, through an HDMI line, Anything that changes to your system will cause a refresh and you'll get this message. It's fine. So now that my boxes are more four by three, right? They're not 69 anymore, they're not that wide screen anymore. They're, not, they're now four by three instead of wide screen. What's gonna happen though, is that my client did a show where they have four by three screens because they're cheapos. And now I have this GoPro video, it's 16.9. And I have letterboxing, right? And the content is what it is. So assuming the content was done correctly, I can go to my geometry, right? Assuming there's no like lower third bugs or there's no ticker that I need to worry about or there's no um, images on the left to right that I need to worry about and everything, everything's been sent to justify, I can just go to my sizing, size it up, play it out. I haven't warped anything out. Everything's been center justified with the GoPro content. So I'm still seeing the center of it. I've lost left to, left to right a little bit, but I, all my content has been is somewhat in the center, right? And as far as my client knows, this looks good to them, right? They, they don't see anything going wrong with it. Um, they've lost some left to right of it. So if you have a person talking or like that, you might get some issues with that, or you might not. 
Uh, another thing you can do is, let's say that there is content on the, on the sides that you, you can't get rid of. And you're like, oh shit, well, they got this, 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 this lower thirds and I blow it up like that, it's not gonna look right. So again, I go to my aspect and I can make it fit within my, within my parameters, within my new canvas, my raster box, I can make it fit that. Now it's been stretched out. You guys saw me do it, so it's clear in your mind that this image has been stretched out. But if I play this, and I've never seen GoPro before, with a four by three, that doesn't look too bad. That looks kind of okay. I can't tell anything here has been stretched out. This looks like a regular mountain scene. I can't tell that that plane's been stretched out if it's fatter at all, right? It looks like a regular plane to me. It's just, it's just the way the content was made. Hey, no big deal. If you show your client doing that though, they might catch on to it and see it all stretched out now. Do it on the back end, they'll just like to see it. None of these images to me, they were playing now, looked stretched out. That one was stretched out because I saw it stretched out. No, but this one doesn't look stressed out. It looks okay to me. Right? That looks fine. But if they see you doing it, it's another story. And again, if you can if you can get the content correctly, where you don't have to do any of this, I highly recommend it. If you're in a bind and you can't, these are the workarounds that you can use. Or you may be lucky and you have a four by three screen and you just need to do you all you need to do is a caption at the bottom and you just move your Oops, you just move your verticals up. And then boom, I didn't change anything around and I have my caption ability now or whatever my lower third bug is or whatever they want to use. All right, so that's pretty much the gist of this. I'm gonna change this back to what I want it to be. 1920 by 1080, acid ratio 1.78, which we went over that, right? 1920 divided by 1080 is, is 1.78. 16 divided by nine is 1.78, that's the math. The depth is in the millions. Your first rate is at 60, not 50, not 24, which you, I mean, you could do 24, but you want to do 60 in this case. I don't want to do interlaced, so no. Um, if you want to do interlaced, because you're programmed to interlaced, do, uh, so when it comes to progressive interlaced, whatever the switcher is using, match it to that, because if you're doing progressive and your switcher is taking in, is sending out interlaced, you're adding another, uh, another step in the processing of, of your content, and now you're adding another second of delay. So you always want to match up your, Progressive interlay, see what your switcher guy is doing or what your media server guy is doing. Whoever's, whoever's mainly on the screens, you want to match up your content to match that. And if you're in it, and if shit, if you can get the videos to match that as well, even better. But if it's progressive and you're saying interlay, it's processing power. And mind you, these are milliseconds, but that stuff adds up, especially if you're in a chain where you're doing progressive and then you're outputting interlay and then you're going through a DA and then the DA is going to a switcher and the switcher now is doing progressive. It's got to be converted multiple, multiple times. You're adding a little bit of delay every time it does that. So instead of this, I'll hit set. Now my screens have been changed. I'll put my GoPro back in there and everything fits correctly. So that's the gist of that. Anybody have any questions about, uh, about that portion before we go on? So that was kind of the, uh, the show controllers and the setup side, we kind of we kind of joined together there because they're quick and they go together well. Um, but I have any questions about that before I go to the next part. All right. So the next part, I'm going to walk you through what I'm looking for and what you should be doing on comms um, when you are on a show site. Okay. And this to me is the most important part. Uh, I cannot drill this into you enough. If you need to be an asshole for that five second clip, you got to be the asshole. Do not do not um, wait for somebody because they're on comms to do your timing because timing is the most important part of your job of, of this whole this whole thing if you are doing playback okay and i'm gonna say this again if you're doing playback and someone is talking on headset talk over them don't be rude about it just just call out the time because the time isn't changing isn't going to wait for anybody it's not going to change for anybody else the time is still the time and it still needs to be done and i guarantee you anybody who's a professional they're going to hear you and they're gonna, they're gonna get themselves the cue, okay? And we're gonna walk through what I'm looking for in a video um, when I'm doing stuff and what I'm doing on comms and, and about this five second thing. So I'm gonna take a quick second to drink some water here because my breath's getting a little harsh. So if you have any questions before I get there about the comms portion or about anything we've viewed so far or anything with player pro in general um, or any questions you know, besides that, just let me know and I'll answer you the best of my abilities. Um, or if you have anything on a side topic you wanna bring up, let me know. <clears throat> All 
All right, so I'm going to lower the, the audio here so you guys can hear me to about five. You should hear a little bit in the background. It's a dramatic effect to my voice, so, so thank you for that. Um, we're going to play this video. So what I would do is on comms, I'm going to get a, the, uh, the TD or the director or the video engineer who was in charge of playback at the time is going to tell you, you know, uh, playback, you know, st stand by for video one. And it's, at this point, we're getting ready for, for video one. I would call back playback pro a standing by on video one. So I'm calling back which playback system I'm using. Cause you might have a backup in a primary. I've called out that I have the video you asked for queued up, right? So everybody knows now that my video is queued up and that now that I'm on standby waiting for your queue to do that to me. If they told you, Hey, we're going to go on the, on the, on the presenters queue verbally, then you would say standing by and presenters queue. All right. But the point is, is that you have now done your job on the video side or the playback side as an operator to say that you are standing by on that video. So I've, I've got it here. I've got it ready to go. I see it in my preview side. I see it ready to go. I just saw that it was in the wrong part. So I, just in case, just in case I'm starting it all over again and I have that time and now I'm listening and I'm queuing in and I'm ready for that queue. And at some point, and for my scenario, we're going to say the CD says go and say, they're going to say roll video one, go. I'm going to be on comms. Video one GoPro is playing. Total TRT is five minutes and seven seconds. And I stopped talking. All right. Now, had I got this video ahead of time, what I'd be looking for is uh, the quality of the video. So I'm looking for tearing. I'm looking for any kind of uh, glitches in the video. I'm looking for any kind of uh, digital tear. And I'm looking at not only the video in my monitor, but I'm trying to look at the screen as well. And when I look at the screen, is that, is that HDMI causing a delay in the audio if someone's talking in that video? Is that HDMI causing digital, uh, digital noise? Am I getting a uh, 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 speckle effect because of an HDMI cable? Because that's where you get it from, is the HDMI cable going to the switcher. I'm also looking for, for quality and sound. Does it sound. Does it sound crunchy? Is it too low? Is it too loud? Is it going up and down between levels? Is my video consistent across the board? Is it doing a gradual change? If somebody's talking on the video, I'm looking for the, syn the synchronicity of that, right? Is the lips in sync with the audio? Is my video lagging for any reason? Is there, being too, is there too much processing going on in the background and the video's not playing very well? I'm looking for all these things. Now for me, it's a five minute video. So I would go at three. I always go at three, I say three, and I just give a, a verbal call out. Whether they're talking or not, I'm just giving that verbal cue so everybody knows how much time they have left. And I'll tell you why in just a second why we do that. But again, if you're looking for any kind of uh, discrepancies in the video, if there's a glitch, if there's an error, if there's some kind of uh, uh, jitter in the video, and you, you're asking, hey, is that supposed to be in there? If that's not in there, can I get another file? This is that moment when you want to figure out what's wrong with this video. And if you're playing it through, if it plays through all the way, because you got to know, right? Some videos might play at the beginning, and then somewhere in the middle, if they're long, there's a corrupted file, and it crashes. If it does that, play it again, see what happens. If it crashes again, hey, so it's on this file, I need a new file. But previewing it and looking for all these things is going to help you do that. All right? And I'm looking at the view meter here, right? It's not peaking very much. I think it's a little too loud, though. I'm starting to scream here. Um, but I'm not, seeing a, I'm not seeing a red line. I'm communicating with the audio guy and saying, hey, how does it sound on your end, okay? Now, I'm going to call out three minutes at the three minute mark. So we're getting there and onto my microphone, three minutes left on the clock, three minutes left on the clock, kill my mic. Now my mic's been killed. I have told everybody in the crew there's three minutes left. At this moment or this time, the TD or the director should be queuing the lighting guy. Hey, light, it's ready. Get ready for value. They're ready for walk up. Get ready for um, your spotlight people. Hey, audio, get ready for the uh, CEO. Uh, Mike Burns is going up. Joe Blow's coming up on stage. Get ready for his introduction audio. Get ready for his welcome music. Stand by for that. And now all your guys in the team are getting ready for their cues. So you got to talk to the video the video team, right? Switcher, stand by to go from, from video to IMAX. Stand by on that cue. And the video guy is there and he's standing by. He's got his, he should, or at least he should, he should have his uh, IMAX ready to go, ready to go on, on the cue that we're going to use. And then if there's a media server involved, she's telling the media server, he's telling the media server, hey, I want to see uh, IMAX on one and two. I want to see... Um, the PowerPoint in the center screen. I want to see DSMs left and right. I want to see uh, uh, whatever. And as she's talking, I got the two minutes. Hey, two minutes left on the clock. Everybody knows it's two minutes left, right? She's still talking. I talked over her and said two minutes left. She heard me, but if she did or didn't, she's gonna keep talking. She knows, okay, I got two minutes, I gotta keep talking. Okay, so video, I want DSMs left and right. One and two to be a uh, PowerPoint. I want three to be your uh, your notes and four to be the, the notes within, within the, the PowerPoint. And then I want five to be my prompter, just in case I need to have that up there, because that's what the presenter wants, right? 
And now I'm getting to that one minute mark. At the one minute mark, I don't say one minute, I say 60 seconds. One minute, I feel like gives you that, that uh, perception of more time. 60 seconds feels like a more of a time crunch. So now you're down to that seconds, right? So we're about to get there. If this is a long video, more than eight minutes, I just want to do half. If it's eight minutes, it'll be four minutes. If it's 10 minutes, it'll be five minutes. If it's 15 minutes, I'll do uh, seven minutes or six minutes. And I'll, I'll determine what the, what the half is on that. So now we're at that, we're coming at that one minute mark, right? Again, I'm gonna unmute my comms. I'm gonna get ready to say it. And I'm gonna say, if we get there, 60 seconds. I got 60 seconds left on the clock and go back off. At this point, I should be doing nothing except for checking that I don't have loop on, I don't have freeze on, and I don't have link on. And then when this stops, it's going to where it needs to go, which is either a blank screen or close on the logo, all right? And by this time, that little last, whatever you need to get ready should be getting done right now, okay? And if it isn't getting done, I'm gonna give you a second reminder, and I'm gonna say at the 30 second mark, 30 seconds, right? So we're getting there right now, I'm on matching my comms, I'm getting ready to say, I'm gonna say 30 seconds left, 30 seconds left, and kill my comms. Now everybody's got 30 seconds to get themselves right to where they need to be at. So whatever cue they need to put on Q Labs or, or 360 um, for audio, whatever preset they need to have in the values, for the values, whatever walk behind that, whatever mic needs to be done, whoever needs to be mic'd up, so they're mic'd up already. Now we're at 15, I missed that cue, so I would call that 15. So 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1, 0, done, go. So now everybody's doing their cue, right? Off of your go, everybody's going to do their thing. You may have a director or producer who does it on their own. You're doing your countdown and they're talking over you. That's fine. Let that happen. But the key is to, to, for you to be heard because that time isn't going to change because she's talking or he's talking or whoever's talking. It's still going to time out when it times out. And everybody needs to know when that is so they can hit their cues because they should be ready. You gave them a three minute, you gave them a 60 seconds, you gave them a 30 seconds. And if anybody misses a cue, no one's going to go to say, hey, Omar Cologne fucked us up. He didn't, he didn't come at the right time. No, because you did all your cues. If the lighting guy misses cue or the audio guy misses cue, they miss their cue on their own. No one's gonna come back to you and say shit because you did your whole rundown. So anyways, anybody have any questions about that? All right, so the last thing we're gonna do real quick, uh, Scott's gonna join me on this and we're gonna do a quick little mock run through. So you guys can kind of hear what that would sound like if there was somebody other than me just talking um, on comms giving you uh, directions as a player cooperator. All right, crew, stand by for video Q1 GoPro. Standing by video Q1 on playback A. What's our TRT? TRT for that is five minutes, seven seconds. Copy that. All right, uh, I'll be counting backwards, three, two, one, and the word will be go. Stand by. Stand by and go. Three, two, one, and go. Video is rolling, TRT is five minutes, seven seconds. So right now we just did the queue up, right? And we're, we're rolling through. So now Scott can either roll it through and watch it through or he, he, we can fast forward if he wants. So you're, you're, all you're doing as, a, as an operator now is sitting there and waiting for the cue to be given of what's going on next, minus the timing. The timing is all you. You gotta say whenever times are going. Let's go to 30. Stand by on 30 and 30's up. And when we come out of this, we'll be going to show look, iMag on screen, audio hot on podium. 20 seconds on the clock. And we will go on Omar's go. 15. Hey, did you guys see the latest movie that, you know, they had that guy over there doing that and he was. Seven. Oh, six, five, oh, 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 yeah. Three, Sorry. Two, one, zero, go. Boom. Everybody's doing their cues. Everything's lit up. I went to black. I'm clear out of the, out of the screens. Everybody's gone up and done their thing. And that's pretty much. Literally the most important part, you heard the talking, we still talked over it. And eventually someone's gonna catch on, they're still gonna hear me, they're gonna know what's going on. Um, and that's what you should be worried about the most as a player for operator. Once you get this up and running, the most important part you have, which seems, doesn't seem like a lot, is that calm part. Now, I cannot stress that enough, that you need to be accurate with the time and talk over people if you have to. Don't be rude about it, just talk normal, continue to talk, people will hear you, I promise you, they're, all of us, and if you've been doing this for long enough, you know, you got two, you always got your two ears open. You're listening to multiple things at the same time. Um, do not let, do not wait for somebody if you're new to this. Don't, don't sit there and like, oh, they're talking right now. Let me just wait. No, 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 no. Talk over them because you need to. You need to be on time with this because that, that time isn't going to change for anybody else. So anyways, that wraps up the whole class. 